All right, we got a little routing under our belt now, a little work with that IP route command and more of that to come. But right now, we're going to step back to the switches a little bit because we got some unfinished business and we hate unfinished business. We're going to take a look at how a switch is going to use a default gateway and more importantly, how to configure one. We're also going to look at Telnet, SSH. We're going to see Telnet in action and what I call using a technical term switch stuff. And these are things that you've probably seen in the config in the course so far, and you thought, I wonder what that is. Maybe the speed or the duplex or an auto setting, that kind of thing, maybe even a service or two. And I'm going to introduce you to all of that later in this section. We're also going to do some troubleshooting at layer two as well, maybe more than we intended. Let's see what the labs do. With our layer two switches, we know that they don't perform routing. They switch, and that's all they do, but... We still need a layer three address on a layer two switch. And the reason we need that is in case we want to remotely connect to said switch. We want to configure it without actually having to go to the switch, connect to the console port, et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot easier to do remote connections, it's a lot more efficient use of your time. So we're gonna configure this IP address on something called the remote management interface. Sounds complicated, believe me, it is not. Sometimes it's called just strictly management interface. Don't worry about which one of the two names you call it. Worry about the fact that it doesn't physically exist. Hmm, what's going on there? Well, you don't have to worry about that either. But let me slide that over a bit and show you. I'm not lying to you here. I'm gonna tell you about the switch we're on. It's a layer two switch. It has 24 fast ethernet ports. It's got two gig ethernet ports. It has a console port and it has a couple little other buttons and flashing lights and that kind of thing. But one thing I guarantee you is that there is no interface that's called VLAN. Hmm, so why am I bringing this up if there's no such thing? Well, here near the bottom of the config, as you can see, there is uh, interface VLAN 1. And it has no IP address on it. And it's just sitting there. But where is it coming from? Well, it is indeed a logical interface. It does not physically exist. And this is what we call a switch virtual interface and SVI. We use these more commonly really on multi-layer switches and when you go after your CCNP you'll see more uses for these but this SVI is on every Cisco switch by default layer 2 or otherwise and the thing is you need this IP address on here to be able to telnet or SSH to the switch or however you want to remotely connect to it because sooner or later in that process, probably at the very beginning, you're going to be asked for an IP address. Well, where are you telnetting to? Oh, uh, that switch over there. <laughs> that is not a good answer. If you type in that switch over there or something like that, you are not going to go to that switch over there. You need an IP address. And the IP address is going to be configured on this interface in just a moment, the same way we configure one on a physical interface. There's no difference whatsoever. I do want to mention right here that you are not tied to using VLAN 1, interface VLAN 1, as the, local, as the uh, switch management interface or the remote management interface. You're not tied to that. You could create another SVI and use that one. We're going to create another SVI on the switch because there is a classic, I don't even want to call it gotcha, uh, it's just it's a hardcore rule of SVIs that you have to know that doesn't come up with VLAN 1 very often. But we're going to save that for a few minutes right now. Let's do a show interface VLAN 1. And this one is up and up. Now with SVIs, I want to tell you the theory with an SVI is that you have to do a no shutdown on it. And I found that to be the case more often than not. But sometimes when I write array switches, which I did with this one before this lab, and I bring it up, you'll see VLAN 1 is up, line protocol is up. And this is exactly the combination that we want. You're going to hear the phrase up and up a lot, especially in this section of the course. And whenever I say you need a port that's up and up or an SVI that's up and up, first part of that, VLAN 1 is up, refers to the physical state of the interface. The second part, line protocol is up, refers to the logical state of the interface. More often than not on switches, when you have a problem, it's going to be a physical issue and you'll see something like fast, inter fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is down, line protocol is down, something like that. I'll show you several different combinations there and what to look for in the troubleshooting section, which is coming up in a little while. But I want to mention this to you now. Up and up is the goal. That's what we're looking for. And again, the first part of that, 
refers to the physical state of the interface. Second part of it, line protocol is, refers to the logical state of the interface. And that's true on switches and routers as well. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and put an IP address on here. And what we're gonna do is IP address 10.1.1.2. And again, typically you'd have to do a no shut after that. Not every time, but it never hurts. So what I wanna do with this lab is with this switch, we're gonna use this, let the switch use 10.1.1.1 as its default gateway. And router one's interface is 10.1.1 slash 24. It has been configured, I did check it. So we're ready to go there. And really, that's it as far as the SVI goes. That's all we really need is that IP address. What I want to do now though, is go ahead and configure a default gateway on here as well. And to do that on a switch, and a switch is gonna use the default gateway, as I interrupt myself, sorry about that. The switch is gonna use the default gateway the same way a host does. And we talked about that in the last section. A host looks at a packet and says, I don't know where to send this, I'll send it to my default gateway. That's what a switch is gonna do. A switch will be able to switch some stuff locally, but other things it gets, it might just say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna send it to this address and let that guy figure it out. And that's what a default gateway really is. Command is very straightforward, IP default gateway. We said that's going to be 10.1.1.1, and that's it. Now, we're going to look at this in the IP routing table. And you may think, well, we're on a layer two switch. Why do I have an IP routing table anyway? Well, frankly, it's not much of one. This is what you have. And we're really not interested in the host gateway stuff. We're really not. The only thing we're really interested in right now is seeing that default gateway is 10.1.1.1. And if I were on a multi-layer switch, enabled IP routing, and ran this command, I would see the same IP route table that we saw on a router. But this is what you're going to see on a layer two switch. So let's go ahead and send a ping because this is the first thing you want to do after you configure a default gateway. You want to send a ping because if you don't have the basic connectivity to the default gateway, something's wrong. Something's wrong with the config. Maybe the default gateway port you're pointing to is closed maybe it's got another ip address on it something is wrong if these pings don't go through and mine go right through no problem at all i'll send them around again no problem at all send them around again no problem at all you might lose a couple of ping packets there at the beginning on occasion but here are the pings 100 percent all the way through and we are ready to go with that default gateway so here we go we've got interface vlan one we've got our switch management interface set up our svi Got the first one with our IP address, and we've got a default gateway. So next up, we're going to use Telnet to connect to this switch from that router, from router one. Uh, before that though, on the very next video, we're going to work a little bit more with SVIs because I want to show you that thing I was talking about with the non-default SVIs and something you really got to watch out for in real world networking. That's coming up next.